Hey guys, Deanne Taylor here. So my previous two videos were about the new PCF controls that became available in Dynamics 365 for customer service. And we were even able to use some of those new PCF controls on other tables as well. Now, this is my last video here on the topic. Uh, I have a lot of very interesting ones that I'm sure you wanna see, so don't go anywhere. So first I'm going to show you what each of those PCF controls look like for the end user. And then I'm going to show you how you can configure them and add them to a form. So the first control that I want to start with is the do activities control. And this is a control that actually sits on top of an activity subgrid. The open activities view is actually what we're going to use, where it's going to show users the number of activities that are due today and also the activities that are actually overdue, right? So that's kind of what you see over here. I can hover over those activities and then I can see that I have a phone call that is due today and I have the send docs task that is due today as well. If I actually click on one of those activities, that takes me to this related open activity view here. So from here, I can do additional things uh, if that's something that I wanted to do. All right, so now let's take a look at how we can configure this. So here you can see that this is actually that control that I already configured. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that and I'm gonna go back here to actually put a component on the form because remember what I said, this is a subgrid, right, of activity. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it here on the timeline and it's now asking me to, to basically say, do I wanna show related records, which yes, I wanna do, and then which records do I want to show? So I wanna show activities and again, I want to show open activities. So once you've done that, you're just going to click on done and you'll notice that now the grid shows up here, but this is not what we want, right? We still need to add the control. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to click here on components and I'm going to add that activities components. I'm just looking to see, here it is, do open activities control. I don't have to do anything else. I'm going to click done and I'm actually going to hide the label. And there you go. Here it is. We just added that do activities control to the form. Now, the second one I want to show you is the case associations control. And this is really cleaning up the legacy case relationship tabs that we had right out of the box. And you're going to see that this new control actually shows a couple of different things. Let me actually move back here to my case form. And I actually put it here on my case relationships tab. So you can see here that this looks really neat, right? We can see knowledge articles, right? Anything that is tied to this case. I can also see whether or not I've sent that article to the customer. I actually put this article in an email and then send it to the customer. And therefore it actually shows this as yes, this article was sent to the customer. I can also review similar cases from here as well, right? These are some similar cases, right? So when I was working on that case, I could mark some similar cases and associate them with this case. Any merged cases are gonna show up in here as well. And then I don't have, unfortunately, any child cases, but this is where they will show up. And you can also see, I actually have the ability to create a new case from here as well. All right, so let's take a look and see how we can configure that. Let's now go, oops, let's actually go here to the tree view and we're going to go here to case relationships. So here is the already configured control. You can see here, right? Our associated grid control is sitting on top of a subgrid. So if I delete that, 
you can see it's now starting to error out. I'm just going to delete the whole thing, delete this thing as well. Okay. Now this is also sitting on top of a grid. So what I'm going to do here is again, I'm going to add a subgrid. It's going to ask me, do I want to show related records? Yes, I do. And then what I want to do is I want to select a table that's called knowledge article incidents. Oops. So let's try that again subgrid related records and i'm looking for knowledge article incidents here we go and there's only one view available the associated knowledge records view so that's what we're going to pick so we're going to click here on ok and again you're going to have this view here now in order to add that component again we're going to expand components and we're going to look for the associated grid control. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And now, as you can see, we get this flyout window. So as you can see, subgrid one has already been selected. That's the table and the view that you selected when you created this subgrid. So you don't have to do anything there. Now for subgrid two, you're actually going to select the table, right? So in this particular case, that's going to be connections. I'm just going to go ahead and search for connections. Here we go, connections. And then we want to get the view that's called related solutions. All right, that's subgrid two. Now subgrid three is going to be cases. Let's find the cases table. Oh, I went a little bit too fast. And then we want to get the all cases view. So let's go ahead and do that. Same thing for subgrid four. Again, we want to pick cases. Don't want to go too fast. Cases. And then again, we want to do all cases in subgrid four. Then we get to the customized title here. So this is really what it's going to show, right? So I'm actually going to do a static value and that's going to be knowledge articles. So that's what you saw earlier, right? In that blue bar, it said knowledge articles. Then we're actually going to leave this customized, this customizer control of subgrid one. We're going to leave that blank and we're going to go directly to the customized title of subgrid two. And that's where we're going to enter similar cases. Again, if I navigate back here real quick, right, that's what we saw here, similar cases. So if you want to give it a different name, obviously you can do that as well. All right. Now we're going to actually enter the relationship name of subgrid two. And that is going to be incident underscore connections one. Then the customizer control of subgrid two, we're going to leave that and we're going to go to the customized title of subgrid three. And there we're going to put in merged cases for the relationship name. We're going to skip over this here. Let's see here. Oh, this is the relationship name. Let me actually, this is the customized title and the relationship name here for subgrid three. Subgrid three is going to be incident underscore master underscore incident. Then we have another customizer control for subgrid three and we are actually going to enter this. Let me just go ahead and show you what this says. MSCRM controls dot custom cell control dot custom cell control. That's it. Now we are at the customized title for subgrid four. Here we are. We're going to put in child cases and then for the relationship name, we're going to say incident dot parent Oh, not dot, sorry, incident underscore parent underscore incidents. And then lastly, we're going to put in that same customizer control that we did earlier here for subgrid four. Again, right, MSCRM controls dot custom cell control dot custom cell control. 
and then I can pick where I want to see uh, those components, right? Web mobile tablet. I'm going to say done. I can actually, again, hide that label and there you go. That is what that looks like. All right. So let's go back here to my summary screen. And now let's talk about attachments. Look at this. This is really neat because it's going to show me all of the attachments, not just attachments uploaded to this case, but also attachments that are associated with this case by a note or by an email. And yes, that is configurable. And look, I can also show this in a tile form. So I get for some of these, I get a little bit of a preview, right? So you can do that um, obviously as well. All right, let's take a look and see how we can configure that. So I'm going to go back here to my case form, go back to the summary form. I'm going to scroll to the side and here is my attachments set up. Now, this is very interesting also because what we're doing here is we actually have a single line of text that we're adding to the form. So I'm going to go ahead here. I'm going to go to table columns and I'm going to search for my, uh, what is it? Pre-create entity attachments ID. So you're going to put this here on the form. I'm going to put a component on there and here is my attachments control. And now you can configure, do you want to show the control title? Do you want to show attachments from conversations? Attachments uploaded directly to this entity. Do you want to show attachments from email and or attachments from notes? And then once you do that again, where do you want to show them? You're going to click done. You're going to hide the label and there you go. There are your attachments. Now, the other thing that is really worth mentioning is with this new control, you can actually upload these attachments before saving the case. So you could probably also add this to your quick create form, right? If you're using this, your uh, quick create form for cases, because again, they're going to be able to, uh, to add these attachments prior to saving the case. And there's also uh, a control for notes that is actually allowing you to do exactly that creating those notes prior to saving the case. In that particular instance, you're going to again, drop this on your form. And again, I would just put this on your quick create form. You're going to go to components and there is, if I go over here, there is a notes control on that as well. I'm going to say done. And again, I'm going to hide my label. And this is exactly the way it's going to look on that form. But again, you want to do this only for uh, the first time when we're creating a case, right? Because otherwise that it's not going to work. So this is really just for notes, just for creating a notes prior to saving the case attachments we can use at any time. We can add at any time. It doesn't matter if it's saved or not the case. We can utilize this at any particular point in time. All right, I'm going to delete this and I'm going to delete this as well. All right. Now, another one that I really, really like is the queue items control. And this is going to allow agents to view the related queue item directly on the case. So they won't have to click here on this queue items details button, right? To open up that queue item and then look at it or update it or anything like that. So this is going to be a lot easier because yes, I can also update this information. So if I'm going to say, I'm going to be working on this, so I'm just going to pick myself. I'm going to go ahead and save that and I am done. So really, really nice control. So let me show you how we can configure that. And here you can see my Q items details configured sitting on the form. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. Let's just click delete here. So this is kind of funny though, because what I saw 
needs to be done is you basically grab a single line of text field. Let's just grab serial number here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going, what I'm going to do then is again, I'm going to do components. I'm going to look for my Q item control. There's nothing else I have to do here. I do want to hide the label and that is it. So there's no grid or anything like that. Again, just the text field and then just adding the Q item details component directly on the form there. And we already got to the last PCF control that I'm going to show you today. And that is a PCF control that's going to allow you to show the colored option set values. So what I'm talking about is, for example, origin, you can see here I have phone is yellow, email, web, Facebook, Twitter, etc. And then for priority, we have these little, right, low is green, high is this little uh, this little up arrow with the red. So that is also a uh, control. And you can see here my status reason doesn't have that control enabled yet. So I'm going to put it on there. So I'm going to go back to my case form. Uh, you can see here I have a drop down or an option set field or a choice field or whatever you would like to call that. Right. And then I'm going to go to my components and I need my option set wrapper control. Again, I don't have to do anything. I'm going to click on done and look at that here. You can already see it. I'm just going to go ahead and save and publish that. And then I'm going to show you again what that looks like. Now, let's just take a look because you're probably going to wonder, okay, where are those colors coming from? If we're actually looking at that column, let's just give it a second here, right? it's going to show you the colors right over here. So I can see blue is new. Waiting for parts is also blue. Maybe I want to make that a little bit different type of blue, or maybe I want to make that more red or uh, right. So we can do, uh, we can set those colors directly from within here. Obviously you need to save, you need to publish this, but that's where those colors are coming from. All right. Let's go back so I can show you all of those status reasons colors. And here we are. Look, there are all of my colors for the status reasons. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Thanks for watching. Until next time.